Hey Reed in Sanford, North Carolina. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and you want to be like me. You want to get a pair of Versace's like I'm wearing. Okay, I'll do it for you. I will cut prescription lenses with Transitions Gray and Crizal for your new Versace. They are the 3199 color GB1 which is the solid black and the 55 eye size. So let me begin. I'm going to take everything out of the original packaging as Versace sends it to me. Of course your Italian leather Versace case. The little styrofoam or something on there. Your Versace card of authenticity where you can register your product with Versace. And of course the Versace cleaning cloth which is upside down. There you go. Hopefully you can read that and there's not too much glare. So let me take out the star of the show, the main attraction. It is, of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it is being shipped from Italy and you're going to get all of that when I ship to you. But these are the model 3199 color GB1 in the 55 eye size. This is, come on flashlight, come on flashlight, don't die on me. It's only got a little bit of life left in it. But you got the Giovanni Versace plaque on the side in platinum to go with your black, making it black and platinum. This is the 55 eye size. I'm wearing the 53 in the dark blue Havana. Of course it comes all black as you are getting. It comes all Havana, which is Versace's way of saying tortoise. It comes in a black and a tortoise. And of course you see my blue and tortoise. But it comes in two sizes. I'm holding the smaller, which is mine in my right hand, and the larger and the all black in my left. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out your original demo lenses and of course you're going to receive all the manufacturer's original packaging and one of your lenses does say Versace on it. I'm going to take your frame, put it into the tracing element of my edger and hit to the start button. A little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the right lens before doing the same thing for the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Versace frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not. Read you know you need prescription. In fact, this is about your fifth or sixth pair you've gotten from me. Your loving sweet wife Brandy. Goes by the name Sunshine, I believe. Your little nickname for her. And of course, she's gotten several pair, three or four pair from me. And she wants to get two more Versace's. I gotta like her for that. She is sweet and loving. And of course, you have three sons, Austin, Jordan, and Nathan, and all of which have gotten glasses from me too. This is your, you've been a devoted Ray-Ban follower. You've gotten four or five pair of Ray-Bans. For your sixth pair, you are getting a nice pair of Versace's. So let me go ahead and type in your pupillary distance, which is 31 in both eyes. It starts at 32.5. I'm going to hit this little minus button a couple times until we're at 31. So let me grab your lenses. I'm going to come down here to my Marco 101 lensometer. I'm going to spin the axis wheel to 99. Your right eye reads minus a quarter, minus one and a quarter at 99. Minus a quarter, minus one and a quarter. Let me go ahead and mark this one. This will be your left eye. I'm sorry, you're right. You're right. I had a 50-50 chance of getting that right. No, minus 50, minus 100 at 55 for your left. Minus 50, minus 1 for your left eye. And of course, you're going to get the manufacturer's original packaging for these to make sure that you're getting the original, authentic Essilor brand transition signature 7 gray lenses with Crizal Avance. So I'm going to spin the axis wheel to 99, which I've done. Put the power drum on minus a quarter. Take your lens out of the protective packet. Now it comes with a little laminate across the front of the lens to protect the lens from anything happening to the front of this while it is being shipped as well. And of course you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to got that there. Put your lens in. I'm going to rotate it until the spherical power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of your lens. Check your astigmatism correction. Now I'm going to put three dots on your lenses that may be too light for you to see so I'm going to darken them. One, two, and three. And this is your right eye. Let me do the same thing for the left. Don't worry, that's just ink from the lensometer. If that were blood, I'd be screaming and crying right now. Let me clean that off. 
I got too much ink in there. Being caught red thumbed is better than being caught red handed. Look, I even got some on your lens. Clean some of that off. So let's do the same thing now for your left lens. Minus 50, minus 1 at 55. Minus 50, minus 1 at 55. Take your lens out of the protective sleeve. Pull the plastic laminate off the front of your lens that protects that. Put the lens in, rotate it until the sphere of power comes in clearly. Let's put the power on minus 50 so that everything does come in clearly. There we go. Find the optical center of your lens. Check your astigmatism correction. Use this to help put those three dots on your lenses so I don't get that on my hand anymore. Take the pen out. One. Come on, pen. Right better. One, two, and three. And this is going to be L for not right. And if you missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> that never gets old. I know it's a bad joke, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. Let me get all of your lens and information and stuff. Bring it back down here. Now this is your right lens. I'm going to put it on the platform of my blocker. Now, these are blocks. I like to call them Jenny from the block. I can make horseback riding sounds with them. From the Princess Bride. And by the way, Reed, never get involved in a land war in Asia. But the little silver button in the back is a magnet. <laughs> Sorry, cracked myself up. The, uh, what is it? Uh, it? I can't think of what Wallace Shawn says. In, in, incomprehensible. No, that's not it. Man, I'm rusty. I'm a, it's because of the cliffs of insanity. It's throwing me off. But anyway, I knew to attach these to your lens while they are cutting. So I'm going to get a two double-sided inconceivable that's it I knew it would come to me <laughs> inconceivable stick that on one side the black side is the sticky side put that on there I joke around with Reed because I said you know his family's gotten about 300 pairs of glasses from me uh, they're gonna make me go on vacation in Disneyland soon but that little silver button on the back is a magnet that's gonna hold its job there let's see what am I looking for oh your lens there it is you can see the outline of your lens. That is the shape of your, the lens that we'll be cutting. I've got your pupillary distance set. I'm going to put that center dot right there. Now the blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. If I were to measure vertically and horizontally, we would come up with the geometric center. Your eye is just inset from there inside that orange cross. So I'm going to put your optical center there. Those other two dots tell me it's lined up perfectly. I'm going to hit that button. And now the block's going to be applied to your right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the unright lens. Your pupillary distance is mirrored from the right. We're staying at 31. Line up the optical center, which is going to sit dead center in front of your pupil. Now these other two dots tell me that it's lined up perfectly. Sorry, I'm going to make sure that it is perfect. Take the block, pull the red paper off to make the black side sticky. Let the magnet do its job, and now the block is going to be applied to your left lens. Now this is the edger. Read, forgive me for repeating myself some of this, but there are people who are seeing this for the first time. But this is the edger. It costs forty thousand dollars. It weighs two hundred pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own. Then they can cut their own lenses at more. They won't need this guy anymore. So, the actual cutting wheel is on the inside. Here on the far right, it's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center, that little channel, that valley, that's what's put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck. And you know what I call that. I call it the Charles because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. Hit that button, it's going to wake up the computer. You could before I did that you could see the aviator shape of the Versace's I just cut before you these are polycarbonate lenses if they were plastic or high index plastic or trivex I would cut them on that material I like this one TBA to be announced later like they're gonna come out with some new lens material down here on the very end I should cut one on that to see what happens but we're gonna keep you on polycarbonate I do not want to polish your lenses I do not want to put a bevel onto the convex front surface of the lens I only want to put a bevel onto the rear concave surface of your lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. I'm gonna hit that green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, that clamp shuts. And then two white styluses are gonna trace the shape of your lens, making sure that you're sure that your lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing it. 
and then the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once it's going to measure the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the best cosmetic look possible with the least amount of edge thickness showing now in just a moment you will hear a grinding sound that'll be my teeth because i've had too much coffee today and then the second grinding sound you hear will be your lens as it touches down onto the cutting wheel if you do see light flickering in the back that is water that is there to catch the optical sawdust polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index plastic cut wet so your lenses have begun cutting your lenses are polycarbonate and of course this is the Essilor brand of lenses they call polycarbonate airwear because they believe they are as light as air these are the transition 7 gray lenses but don't take the abbreviations for it you can read it in big print here transition signature 7 and of course with Prezol Avancé and you have 25 times the amount of sun protection on there. Now I'll show you your transitions in a little bit. But the Prezol Anti-Glare, it's three features in one. The first feature is it eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, you can see how the light reflects off of one but not the other. So that's the second feature. It's also known as an anti-reflection coating. That's why it has the initials ARC. Hey, how about that Schwarf that's on there? Look at that. Oh, it's caught on the top. It's gonna fall off. There they go. But, so when someone's looking at you, it makes for much better eye contact. They're not gonna be looking at your reflection, their reflection in your glasses. So also if someone, if you take a selfie or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens they'll see just your eyes now the third feature that i like which is the practical side is it comes with the best scratch protection in the business the machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars it takes over 24 hours to vaporize seven different coatings onto your lens because the time and the investment it takes grizzol puts the best anti-scratch coating on their lenses as I mentioned, to protect their time and investment so they don't have to replace your lenses. Now, as you can see, water has begun spraying onto the lens. It does that for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris. In just a moment, this lever will come out. At the end of that lever is a spinning wheel, something that you would find on the end of a Dremel tool. That's what's going to apply the safety bevel to the rear surface of the lens, just in case any lens does come out the rear surface of the frame and comes in contact with the cheek it will be smooth and you'll have no irritations whatsoever but with your prescription i doubt you can have any edge thickness showing but because i do cut some very strong prescriptions it's critical now i'm going to open this door with my mind you like that i can do other things with my mind i can melt ice with my mind i can it just takes me a couple hours i have to stare at it for a couple hours but then i can melt it ice is no match for my brain now i'm going to take my thumbnail and scrape the edge of your lens to make sure all the optical sawdust has been removed i'm going to take your lens tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs once it's pressed in press your lens in and it wants to fight me so i'm not going to force it i'm going to take it back out i'm going to take one tenth of a millimeter off the edge of your lenses hit the retouch button i want to take one tenth of a millimeter off going all the way around the circumference now to all my american viewers who have no idea what a millimeter is it is the distance between my thumbnails i'm going to take one tenth of that distance off going around the edge of your lens until it snaps in there perfectly i am a perfectionist i cut every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide so i'm going to make sure that the lenses fit if i were to force it in there it would cause the frame to stretch or as we in the business call roll what happens if you can think of your frame as a gutter if i were to force the lens in there it would make the bottom of the frame roll outwards shortening the life of the frame and of course giving you a terrible cosmetic appearance and again because i'm a perfectionist that cuts every pair of lenses that get shipped i'm going to make sure that your lenses are perfect before it leaves this lab you want a perfectionist like me cutting your lenses so again it's getting the safety bevel applied to the rear surface of the lens this is just a routine procedure it does it at the very end of every cutting cycle now reed because you've done this before i want you to help me open this door with your mind on the count of three reed you beat me to it i didn't even count to three 
Boy, you are good. You must have telekinesis. For those of you out there who don't believe in that, I'll prove that it works. Everyone with telekinesis, raise my hand. See, I told you it works. Okay, so clean that off. Let's tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Use my thumbs, press down at the nose. Now it snaps in there easily. I'm going to do the same thing for the left lens. I'm going to flip that over to L and put the lens into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby and hit the green start button just like before the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame you can see as it's going all the way around and of course the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once it's measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel so you have the best cosmetic look possible and of course as i anticipated you have no edge thickness whatsoever protruding from the back side of this frame so I want to go ahead and take this block off pull that sticker off where's your paperwork here it is I'm gonna come back down here to my lensometer find my flashlight you know I've got a smaller flashlight I just can't find it but I'm gonna place your dot your lens in there just above this red dot and read the prescription of course I got to spin that back to 99 the axis wheel and I am getting minus a quarter, one tick mark away from zero. Now the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It also goes, it starts at zero, also going by the name Plano, which is, we in the business call it Plano, everyone else calls it a city in Texas. But it starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments from there, 0.25, 0.50, 0.75, one, one and a quarter. You almost have a nice little counterclockwise with all the numbers mentioned. And of course, going up from there, 150, 175, two, and so on. So you have one step of minification. Most of your prescription is astigmatic, meaning that it's correcting for your astigmatism. Now you have one step of farsighted correction, but you have an additional five steps of astigmatism correction. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. It is not a disease, it is not an affliction, it is just a shape. Think of it as the fine tune knob. This first number makes everything the correct size. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So we're going to fine tune that knob. Now we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 99. A straight line is 0, 90 to 180. You know, 0 to 180 is a straight line, so we're going to turn that fine tune knob just past 90 to about 99. So let's go ahead and check your astigmatism correction. We were at a quarter. We're gonna have one and a quarter. And what do you know? You add a quarter to one and a quarter and you get 150. You remember high school algebra where you add two like signs together? Yeah, don't worry, I've forgotten algebra math too. So let's use today's terms. If someone had borrowed a quarter and then they borrowed another $1.25, they would owe you 150. That is where we're at, 150, exactly halfway between one and two. Now your left eye needs less, less <clears throat> more far-sighted correction. You need two steps here, but you need one step less astigmatism correction. And we're going to turn that fine knob to 55. So we're going to go just past the 45 meridian to about 55. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. Now Reed, go ahead and open the door. Oh, Reed, you are so good. Of course, like I said, this is about your 5th or 6th or 112th pair of glasses you've gotten from me. You need to make a video of these as you unbox them. How's that? Post it on your Facebook account or Instagram or Twitter, all the accounts you use. Help me market your products. Look, you pay for these and I'm telling you to help me sell more of them. What do I do with your frame? Here it is down here. So I'm going to take your left lens. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I press down at the nose and it snaps right in. Let's go ahead and take this block off. It is no longer needed, nor is this sticker. Let's come back down here. Let's check the axis of your left eye. We're gonna spin it back to 55. We're gonna put the lens in just above that red dot. And we are getting, where's my flashlight again? I keep losing that little thing. We need to get a bigger flashlight. But we're getting minus 50. We're exactly halfway between 0 and 1, which is where you would find 50. 
Now you have another four steps of astigmatism correction that's going to give us a combined value of minus 150. Exactly halfway between 1 and 2, exactly where you would find it. So that's perfect. Your pupillary distance is 31 in each eye for a combined value of 62. I'm going to flip the card over, place the zero on my PD stick against my thumb on your right lens, and when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 62 millimeters, so that is made perfectly. Of course, this is the time in every video as I clean your lenses that I mentioned to you that when you get these in the mail, and of course, free shipping anywhere in the US, but when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that one side is going to the, the, this could be too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit too high or too low on the other side. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And I am no different. I'm part of that 80% and I'll show you in just a moment. But I'm going to make sure that every frame is in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it down on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm going to put mine down next to yours, and as I press down, you will see them wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. And of course, now's a good time to show you again, both with the anti-glare coating on there, your Versace size 3199, size 55 in the GB1 All Black, and of course my Versace 3199 in the color 5118, which is the dark blue Havana. But let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo! I'm going to flip these over and make sure there's no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. Check the tension on every each spring hinge, and that's good. And of course, this frame, this Versace frame, sells for $250. And as I mentioned, you are going to get one free pair of clear, free prescription lenses with that. Reed, you paid the $50 to the upgrade to the transition, and another $40 to upgrade to the Crizal lenses. And this is what they look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them, which means I'm going to give them a strong burst of ultraviolet light. I've got my little transitions box here in the corner, and I'm going to turn on the light. And as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for the lenses to darken when exposed to UV. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now, Reed, forgive me for repeating this. You know this, but I have to explain to everyone else. Transition lenses will darken on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard does not crack from sitting in the sun all day and that's why your lenses won't turn dark. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. They're also temperature sensitive. Since this is uh, the middle of July, I mentioned, or actually early August, I tell everyone that they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. When it's triple digits outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Everyone's miserable when it's 100 degrees outside and nobody works 100% efficient. So that's it. That's the first time your lenses have been activated. But don't worry, Reed. Come on, they're going to get darker. Don't you remember? We talked about this, dog. So that's that if anyone has any questions you can email me at free prescription lenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website read in sanford north carolina i hope you enjoyed watching as i cut prescription lenses for your versace 3199 color gb1 and the 55 eye size with the 17 bridge and everyone else has got the chance to see how i bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you